Then they sent me back to jail for the same sentence. I've done 13 months and 10 months for asking convicted paedophiles how they feel about their sentence. But it, I, I promised myself when I come out, you done that to stop me talking about it? No, nah, I'm going to show the world about it. I'm not just going to not going to talk about it. I'm going to make films about it. I'm going to come after the people with the dirty hands. I'm going to show everyone who you are. So I, I put together a database over 12 to 18 months and you can watch our the documentaries are fabulous we do a police style investigation when the men the rapists are named by three or more girls when they're named by three or more who don't know each other we go after them when i say go after them we make them famous i go into their businesses do you know the satisfaction i took in seeing the fucking color drain out of their faces when i know you've been raping kids and they're not just do you know just the success stories of their lives. They're all driving sports cars. They've all got businesses. They've all got takeaways. They're all very successful. They've all got their own Muslim families, but they've left a trail of destruction of English girls who are hooked on drugs, hooked on alcohol, who are suicidal, who are self-harming. Yeah? And you fuckers are still, still living the life of Riley. And the police identified two... In the town of Telford, the police identified 200 rapists. They prosecuted 11. What about the others? So then I thought, right, well, I'll come to Telford. The reason I chose Telford, Telford has a 1.7% Muslim population. The police identified... 200 men. There's only a thousand Muslim men in Telford. So I thought I can find out everything I need to know about the new lot in Telford. I can do my read. I found out everything. Yeah. I knew where they lived. I put trackers on their cars. We had bugs. We went to town on their gangs. Yeah. And they had no idea. We were in their restaurants undercover. We had people undercover talking to them, laughing with them, getting to know them. They had no idea. We were building a fucking database on them. And then when, so then when it was time for them to know, I put out the trailer, the first trailer, and I put 200, all their faces on the wall, yeah, in, in our promo. And to let them know, because I thought, these girls are looking after, over their shoulders every day. You lot need to be looking after your shoulders. But I didn't think about the effect it would have on the girls telling their stories. So the first girl to tell her story was a girl called Nicole, who was raped from the age of 11. And I just thought, we'll, we'll tell, put her out, tell her story. You've got to hear what they've done. You gotta hear it, man. And they're sitting in Lamborghinis, the fuckers. But they got a shock. They got a shock, man. When because and they, when I say they got a shock, they went to town. They blew everything up. They blew all the girls' houses up. They blew. They they went. So they didn't know who's been talking to me. They just knew. They saw the promo and all their faces were all over the wall, and they're all thinking shit. I thought, yeah, you're going to be famous, mate. So and then I, when I find them, um, Goldfresh Khan. I was fo we were following him. He went to Birmingham, so we're, we're in Birmingham. I thought, I can't jump out on him in Birmingham. I'm like, I will get killed. He's in the middle of uh, Alan Rock. So we follow him, and just as he gets to his house, I jump out of the car. I said, Go for I've got some questions to ask you. You've been trafficking children in this town. You've been raping children. These are pillars of the community. So uh, Charlie Khan, his brother, who I find as well, I'll get him outside KFC. But we, and we spent so much work on this. It was, it was such a project. But when I get him, he's, oh, we got videos of him preaching in the mosque against grooming. It's one of the main fucking groomers. They're so blatant about it. Do you know the picture? When we put the whole investigation together, we have, you know, they do these diversity photos outside mosques, the police do. The man whose job it is to stop grooming is stood next to the main groomers either side, having a photo taken outside the police, outside the police station. There's no, we couldn't find a photo outside the Sikh temple, but outside the mosque, the police have all gone to have their diversity. We're stronger together, stronger together. They're all the rapists, bruv. They've all been raping the kids. So we've done this, we've done this five part series so far. It's brilliant. It's on Rumble. Watch it. It's the Rape of Britain. And one by one, they dropped the men. And then I go and find them. One of them, we, I hired a house. I rented a house. He's a boiler engineer. He's a boiler engineer. And even when I, f I flew a victim, I've been talking to a victim for 12 months who was living abroad. And I fly her back into England. It's, it's during COVID, so I have to fly her via another country. She comes in and I'm waiting at the airport. And uh, the police nicked her. The police nicked her for making, for, for malicious communications because she named her rapists online. It's insane. The, the, the cover-up attempt that's still going on in our authorities and police to silence the victims and anyone talking about it, which is what they've done with when they put me in prison. So I thought, I'll make this, fight, I'll make this documentary. But do you know how disheartening it was making it at a time when you're... It's deflated. Well, not deflated. No one's, get, no one's watching it. How, why is there no backing for it? Why is it not getting exposed to the hill? Why is, like I say, the kids fighting in school, that's not newsworthy for me. But for the rapes and the the abuse and the child trafficking, that should be getting spoke from the hilltops. It should be, but then it goes against the utopia of the community, of the country they're trying to build. This utopian idea that everyone's equal and every community is equal and there's no problems. And the, Yeah, there are. You're importing people from Afghanistan. 99%, these are pure research figures, 99% of people in Afghanistan want Sharia law. That means that if 100 men come in from Afghanistan, 99 of them want Sharia law. They don't leave their view at the border. You what is Sharia law? Sharia law, they want, which is sex with children. 
There's no there's no legal age. Marrying children. Um, in, in, in Islam, outside of your four wives, you're allowed to take whatever your right arm possesses. And again, we look at this in the documentary. We look at the reasons why. Because when we what is this documentary for people to see? Where can people see this? The Rape of Britain on my Rumble channel, which is official Tommy Robinson. Mm. The Rape of Britain, and there's five part series. So when we look at it, and the reason we look at it, listen to these numbers; they will terrify you. Uh, One point seven percent Muslim population of Telford. Police identified two hundred men. We identified two hundred fifty four names. An independent inquiry by a solicitors firm in Birmingham identified three hundred. It's only a thousand Muslim men. That means twenty to thirty percent of the men were raping kids. In that town. Now, the other town we have figures for is Rotherham, where we have a 3.7% Muslim population and we have 1,400 children. Joan Telford, five are dead. Five have been murdered. From 1,000 men in the town, five kids have been murdered and 1,000 victims. If you want to understand how big the problem is, we only have the numbers on Telford and, and Rotherham. There's no Muslims there. I remember when I was going up to Telford, everyone was like, you need to be careful here. They run everything. I think, I think run everything. I'm from Luton Town. 50%. We've had it with them for years, right? We, no one in Luton, we didn't back down to them. How the fuck are they running your town with, with a thousand men? But they did, they do. They're like a mafia. The Benalis, that was their fam. that's their gang name, which is to do with a tribal region they're from in Pakistan, where they've come from. The Benalis, that was their gang name. And you've even got Amir Khan doing videos going, big up the Benalis, yeah? This is, they, they reach, they control the heroin, they control the drugs, their, their violence, they control everything in that town. But the, I got, my satisfaction come when, None of them knew who, was, who I was coming after next. So I'm sitting there, but I'm thinking, I'm getting you, but I weren't really thinking of the girls because Nicole had a breakdown. Each girl had a breakdown. We're telling their stories. They're putting their faces up. Documentary after documentary. So then we tried, by episode three, I thought, right, we need to work on the centre. Would that go against them in court because they've already put information out there? How does that work? No, because the girls would get... Mate, the and third... Gave statements. N Nicole gave a statement, had a DNA. She was pregnant at 13. They got the fetus of the baby and they still ain't charged him. They just not charged him. Why? Because if they charged them, 200 of them, see, they're, they're basically making a handful of arrests in each town and city. And you cannot rely. So Telford police are totally corrupt. In episode two, we find Inspector Jim Bayliss. We get witnesses that he was taking money off the gangs. I go and find him and confront him in the documentary. And he, 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 he leaves a year before his pension. So the, the police knew. They obviously got rid of him with a little handshake. They knew he was working with the gangs. I go and find him and confront him. Saying, how, how, how did no more cases go? And cases collapsed. Cases he was in charge of, of Muslim paedophiles, collapsed. Bent police officers are working for him because there's so much money involved. They run everything. So, and, and when you look at what they're doing, we wouldn't have the prison places. We wouldn't have the court spaces. We wouldn't have the cost to take every one of these rapists. There's been that many rapes. And there are that many of them involved in raping children that they're just putting 10 or 20. And the best thing that's happened is when police forces, say from Yorkshire or from different cities, it's handed over to the National Crime Agency because the National Crime Agency on in the town. So there's no way the Pakistani gangs can have influence in the, in the police in the National Crime Agency. So the National Crime Agency can come into a town and then just obliterate them, which is what we've been seeing when you see 30, 40, 50 of them getting done in different towns and cities. It's not the local police. Local police do nothing.